Hi, my name is Jim Everson. I'm the president of the Canola Council of Canada, and I'm joined here today by the CEO of the Canadian Canola Growers Association, Rick White. So we'd like to provide an update on our trade situation with China. As you know, China is a critically important market for Canadian canola. We face a major market blockage um, from China for canola seed. And unfortunately, it still continues. There isn't a, a terrific amount of new information about our trade situation with China, but there are some seed sales happening currently. Um, otherwise, the permits for Richardson and Viterra have still been suspended, and there are heightened inspections that are applying to all seed shipments going into China. So that's the situation that's been the case for some time. There are certainly some activities taking place, including Canada taking China to the World Trade Organization for consultations. Uh, but the situation remains still a significant challenge for us. And this is a very, very important issue for farmers. So we're going to go through a, a few items and, and give a more clear update on, on the China situation. And we'll also have some questions today that are coming direct from farmers. And we'll answer some of those questions uh, for you today. There are some positive signs, but they're limited. There are month-to-month -month, uh, seed shipments going to China at the moment. Um, there's also an appointment of a new ambassador. Mr. Dominique Barton is the new Canadian ambassador to China. Uh, that's a good thing for our industry. He's uh, an internationally well-known businessman. He's very familiar with natural resources trade, so we will be working with him and with the rest of the government of Canada. And there is the WTO consultations that have recently taken place where Canada and China uh, met under the auspices of the WTO to discuss China's concerns. Any time that the two sides are sitting down and having a, a, a solid consultation is a good thing for our industry. We've already had an announcement earlier on this year from Minister Bibo about the uh, advanced payments program, uh, expanding the limits, more interest-free for canola, et cetera. Also a delay or a uh, stay of default for the 2018 program, which has really, really helped farmers out with their cash flow needs. But the, one of the key parameters that we're looking at and, and talking with the government is about agri-stability in particular. The reference margins under that program um, of 70% um, are just too low to be adequate for farmers to help them during this time. And you need to have these business risk management programs working properly. So we're working and advocating every chance we get to increase those uh, reference margins to 85% and remove the reference margin limit to get a true 85% coverage level under that program. The government has heard us, but we're looking for them for action right now. There is strong demand for high quality canola in China. We have had market access challenges with China in the past and we've been able to deal with them effectively. We are optimistic that we will be able to do that this time. Diversification of markets is pretty critical. Uh, one of the areas is biofuels domestically, increasing the use of canola in the biofuels industry in Canada. It's important that the provincial governments uh, be supportive of us on that front. They have a strong interest in agriculture in the province and canola in the province and I think they can play a strong role in working with the federal government. We're also looking at improving the competitiveness of Canadian uh, canola in the European biofuels market. A third area is working with the government to improve our human resource capacity through trade commissioners, plant scientists and so on who help us with our market access issues particularly in Asia, China certainly, but also other Asian markets that we will be looking to to diversify our uh, market base, such as Pakistan, Bangladesh, Vietnam, and so on. So we are working with the government to, to have them increase their capacity to support market access work on behalf of the industry. When we look at the biofuel market here in Canada, we've been long-standing advocates of trying to move the renewable content, particularly in the diesel pool, to uh, increase from 2% nationally to a 5% nationally. When you look at moving from 2 to 5% and including canola oil in that mix of uh, renewable content, that would uh, require about 1.3 million tons of canola seed and it would mean about $650 million uh, farm gate uh, price level. So it's a domestic market um, and it's a predictable market, one that we can control within our own boundaries and not rely on an export market quite as heavily as we have. That would reduce greenhouse gases by about 3.5 million tons per year. 
um, just by doing that change. We have Quebec moving to 4%, we have Manitoba now moving to 5%, but we are looking at Saskatchewan and Alberta to move from 2 to 5% provincially to make that happen. It's the right thing to do for the environment and for farmers and for diversifying our markets domestically here and makes better utilization of our crush capacity and it also uh, keeps the value added at home here for Canadian farmers. Thank you very much and please keep in touch. You can always get information from our website, uh, ccga.ca. You can contact us direct, email us, call us, whatever works for you, but we need your ideas and your input so that we can carry those messages forward to the government. This is a really important issue. We understand the importance of the Chinese market. Please go to the website, it's canolacouncil.org. We have a special page there in our China file so that whenever there's an update to the situation with China, you can learn about it there. And we're very interested in hearing your ideas and uh, thoughts about the China market. Thank you very much.